Hello, my name is Johnny Whitfield. I'm the editor of the Courier Times, and we're here today with um, Mark Phillips, who is a candidate for the city council here in Roxborough, and we appreciate you taking the time to, to visit with us today. Why don't you start by just telling us a little bit about yourself? Tell us about your work and your family and, and that sort of thing. Well, as you said, I'm Mark Phillips. I live at 233 North Main Street. Mm -hmm. I've lived there for probably a little over 24 years now. Moved here from North Durham. Um, this is home now. My children call it home. Uh, they love it here. They don't live here now, but they, they all love coming back. Um, I've Say so lived at that address. I work as a business manager in Butner right now in a, in a family business. I was recruited there about two years ago, but it lived but it worked in Roxborough right on Main Street for a long time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, go back again. I, Roxborough is home. I love Roxborough. The reason I got into this was because I, uh, at the time, the, the council was was. Um, this is go back when I first ran in 2003. I, I used to say it was like a ship on the water and had no place to go because mm -hmm. it had no direction. And so we just needed direction to go. And I think since uh, there was a fairly good turnover in 2003, and we, we righted the ship, we kept it going. Now, it's not always gone as fast as it wanted to, uh -huh. but or, or sometimes it gets off a little kilter. Right. And sometimes the wind changes. So you got to make corrections as the wind changes. Right now, we got a lot of wind blowing in at us to, to, to try to get us off course. Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, I have five daughters. Uh, they all went to school here in Person County. They all graduated from either Person or RCS, although one of them did graduate from the School of Science and Math in Durham. Mm -hmm. but, uh, they all attended Person County School. Right. Okay. So tell me a little bit about some of your uh, uh, some of your civic involvement and uh, uh, the things that you do with your time when you're not working as a council member not or sure. working. I'm not sure you got enough time for that. <laughs> okay. Well, hit the highlights. One, one of the things right now, I lead a congregation, um, part of the LDS Church over on Burlington Road. Mm -hmm. um, if, if I go back and start. Worked with Partnership for Children. I was in okay. Kiwanis, um, United Way, Roxburgh Development Group. Well, actually, it was RUDC at the time, Roxburgh Uptown Development Corporation. Mm -hmm. uh, home Builders. Um, in fact, all of those organizations. I was with well, United Way. I was campaign chair for two years. But mm -hmm. all of the others, at, one, at some point in time, I led those organizations. I was okay. part of the founding members, board members of Roxburgh Community School. On that board for 13, 10 years, mm -hmm. maybe it was 12 years, about 12 years. I lost count. Mm -hmm. I used to tell them at the Partnership with Children, I was in the second year of a three year term for about five years. <laughs> so I uh, served on that one a good long time. I'd have to think there's, there's numerous others. I've been right. on some Boy Scout committees, um, district committees. Yeah, it's just like I, I still we yeah. still do some volunteer work down at the Christian Help Center. And, okay. Uh, that's some of the highlights. Okay, great. So tell me a little bit about um, why you were interested in running for a seat on the city council. Well, as I said before, mm -hmm. uh, when we first ran, it was not the, the ship wasn't being steered. It didn't. Mm -hmm. As long as it was on the water and working, nobody cared. Right. They just wanted to work. And so we want to try to keep it going in a direction. Um, Roxborough faces challenges, especially after this last economic downturn. Mm -hmm. You see the places like Raleigh, Durham, Charlotte, Greensboro, they're thriving now. But if you go to the small towns mm -hmm. like a Roxborough and some others, that they are still struggling. Mm -hmm. We still are. We still have some struggles. Going to take some good leadership in there to to keep it on the course. But today, there's so many challenges and so many outside challenges, forces coming in to try to take you off. I'd, I'd call them special interest things. They try to take you off the. While they need to be addressed, they they tend to take you off that course.
course, mm -hmm. but you, you want to keep progressing. You want to, it, growth is difficult. Um, growth is kind of up to the economic development. Right. That's a county function. The best thing we can do is make Roxborough look the best, um, make it look as good, make sure our infrastructure is good. We're the ones that have the infrastructure. We've got the water, we've got the sewer. We have to make sure that's in good working order. Well, we're facing challenges on that. The, the EPA came down with a mandate. We got to come up with $20 million to spend on a, on a um, wastewater project to make the wastewater going into Marlowe's Creek about, about that much clean. Mm -hmm. Just just parts per billion right. almost clean, but it's going to cost us $20 million. And our entire budget is only $13, $15 million a year. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, those are some things we face, and, and I think I still have some good ideas and, and some, some things that we need to look to do. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about some of your own skills and, and, and personal traits that you think would make you a good council member. I listen well. Mm -hmm. I think I don't only listen, but I hear. Okay. And I think a lot of folks will listen to you, but they don't always hear you. Hear what you're talking about, and hear your needs or, or your. Um, I think that that's a skill that I have. I'm not afraid to speak my mind. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid to ask questions. Um, in fact, the mayor has to kick me every now and then to, 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 to tell me to either calm down or, or whatever. I think I think I'm open-minded as far as listening to all the. Besides, one of the best things about the council now is, is we're five fairly diverse people up here. Um, but we all get along. Now, we don't always agree. You know, we, right. And voices get a little raised every now and then, but at the end of the day, we come to a conclusion. We come to a consensus. We agree. Not everybody gets what they want. And I think that's a good skill to have. Okay. And I think it's good to be able to do that. That's what's old saying all government is, is local. Mm -hmm. and, and, how true it is, what happens in Washington, sure, some things will have an effect on you, a $20 million effect. Right. But, you know, the decisions that really affect our lives every day comes from what we do. Right. You know, the landfill, you know, that has, you know, I don't know if those guys know what kind of effect it has all the way down the, the pipe. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me ask you the flip side of that question. Um, what, what do you see as your biggest weakness in terms of serving as a council member? Weakness? Mm -hmm. You said I had weaknesses. Well, we know that no <laughs> one's perfect, so. Um, I don't know if that's a, I'm not sure how to answer that. Because you're right, we all can improve on things. Um, maybe keep them mouth shut a little more often. Okay. Um, Fair enough. Um, There's no wrong answer. I, I know, but I'm, I'm, um, I, I try to be as, as, I don't like to be called a politician. I like because I don't want to compromise right. with my values and things like that. I, and I think politicians too often compromise their values. You give me this, I'll give you that. I'm not going to vote for anything that I don't feel like is not in the best interest of Roxborough. Mm -hmm. My agenda is Roxborough. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me ask you this, and, and I know you've already talked about the, the wastewater treatment plant, and, and the council has been working on that for some time now, and uh, is nearing a resolution, but as you look forward and you look to the next four years or so, five years or so, what is Roxborough's next big challenge? One of the things that I that I would we have quarterly planning meetings. That was one of the things that we instituted back in two thousand three. We started to have these. Sometimes we'd stay on schedule, sometimes not. It's time to have them again. That's where we bring up things that we would like to see take place. Um, one of the things that's been on my mind lately is 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 infill in the city. Right. If you mm -hmm. if people don't know what that is, that's vacant spaces, being right. able to fill those vacant spaces with, with things, whether that's in neighborhoods, whether that's in businesses. Um, as 
I said, in fact, the best thing we can do as, as a council or as a city is to make Roxburgh the best it can be, make it look the best it can. Mm -hmm. I think we need to work on our gateways into the community. I think we need to work on, 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 on we've been working on uptown, making it, try to look, make it look better and try to focus on there. I think there's some things happening on the boulevard. Some folks agree with it, some folks don't, that, that may help that. That's DOT and beyond our control. Mm -hmm. um, but that's one of the things I want to I want to see our neighborhoods look better. And, and I think some focus on, on I think general beautification, not just one or two areas of the city, but focus on all of them. Mm -hmm. One of the things we've we're doing is focusing on our we redid our code recently. All right. Um, back next month, there's some more um, changes to the to the code that'll help with, with grass, mm -hmm. abandoned vehicles, and dilapidated buildings. Um, and I think that's one of the focuses I want to see us work on, just to make it look a better place. And if we do that. Hopefully, that along with the economic development, as people come in, they'll see it's a vibrant place, mm -hmm. a place they want to live, a place they want to bring their business to. That's what I want to see. Okay. Um, let me ask you, particularly about the infill that you mentioned um, a few minutes ago, how, how does the city tackle that issue in the next, in the next few years? Give me some, some sort of specifics and Things that you think well, I'm hoping, to, I'm hoping we can come up with some of those specifics and, and some of our means. But one of the things I think we need to market ourselves a little better okay. as well. There may be some some properties. Um, I was talking with a, a citizen not too long ago. Um, maybe we can spend a little money to put some marketing together. Maybe we've got a track of land that, that maybe would be a good place for right. our, for some apartments. Mm -hmm. or, or can't we just get a sketch so to speak of what it could look like you know, and, and with, with the services that are available with the sewer that's there the water that's there and then market it to some developers mm -hmm. maybe it's a stretch where we can where it'd be good for a restaurant or, or another type of business maybe a little strip of some kind that, that would be good i think that's one of the things as far as commercially goes right if you go into some of the neighborhoods, there's some block grants that are available that we've used in the past to go into a couple of neighborhoods that has helped in those areas. Cabell Village was one. There's one back up up our office by um, not Gentry Street, by the Gentry Street back up in there. We, mm -hmm. we, and I think we need to go look for those type of things. I think we need to work with Habitat as well. There's they're vacant lots and things we perhaps they could use as well. Okay. And, City may have access some way to get to help there. Sure, market to some developers. Okay. Um, let me let me ask you a little bit about the relationship between the city and the county. At times, that's been a good relationship, and at other times, it's been somewhat strained. How do you how do you see yourself as a council member helping to make that relationship stronger? Well, I have some discussions with with some of the folks. In we used to have some city and county joint meetings. I'd love to see us go back to those. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to see us get together a little more and, and discuss some common um, common issues, right? Some that affect both. Landfill being one. There were times when I bring that up years ago, mm -hmm. and nobody wanted to talk about it. Right. Enough. That's what I got. Right. Okay. And and um, um, you know, now it's at the forefront. And those things that affect that has a tremendous effect on the city. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, you know, there's water and sewer that we have that we can that can be moved out into the county. Right. Um, I just think economically, and we need to, to sit down and, and work together a little more. Um, and I'm going to suggest that we. 
joint meeting, and, and perhaps we have some some you know, mayor and board chair could get together and talk a little bit. Mm -hmm. I know that the managers seem to have a decent relationship. Right. right. So um, we just need to be able to talk amongst ourselves. Okay. okay. Well, great. Well, listen, we appreciate you taking the time to talk with us today. And uh, it's been uh, 15 minutes. It, it, it has. It has. And thank you for watching. We hope that you will go out and vote. Election day is October 10th, and early voting starts on September 21st. Thank you. Vote Mark Phillips.